Greetings, Cornerstone family and anyone dropping in. This is our sermon preparation for uh, Easter Sunday, 2021. As we get ready for this Sunday, we're going to be in uh, Matthew 18, verses 15 through 20. And that is the passage that deals with personal offenses in the local church. And it involves an escalation of the matter from going to them individually to taking witnesses to going to the church family and uh, quite a statement in that. It is Easter Sunday and I am so thankful to all of you and I mentioned it this Sunday morning and had good responses. Especially I was thankful for those of you who are new to Cornerstone to have that good response that at our church what we try to do is take a passage of scripture and go chapter by chapter, verse by verse. And if we take the month of December for Christmas messages and we take Palm Sunday and Easter Sunday for crucifixion and resurrection messages and Thanksgiving for Thanksgiving messages. If the pastor goes on vacation three Sundays and is on a mission trip another one or two and has guest speakers, you just run out of Sunday mornings to work through the scriptures and it is my desire to preach through the whole word of God before I die. And, uh, and so I'm thankful that you guys allow me to preach on resurrection as often as the text brings up the matter. And uh, otherwise, we uh, just keep going forward in the book we are in. Uh, we do cover the resurrection sometimes out of season uh, with the religious calendar, uh, the ecclesiastical calendar. But I'm thankful that you're patient with that and uh, allow me to just plow through and go on. So let's look at this week's text. There is an escalation I want you to see and a statement that I want you to see as well. So as we look at this week's text, again, Matthew 18, verses 15 through 20, uh, we see here it says, If your brother sins against you, go and tell him his fault uh, between you and him alone. Uh, let's just stop there for a second and recognize that sins, wrongs happen within a church family. It's part of being a family uh, with sinful human beings. We are being sanctified. We are not yet perfectly sanctified. And, and so the text says to go and tell him his fault. Now, normally we don't dive uh, into the Greek in, uh, in, in gospel passages because so many of them are narratives. But this is really a didactic, a teaching by Jesus. And, and so when we look at this, we see that the word sin, um, we, if we look that up in the Greek dictionary, it means to commit a wrong, to sin. And so again, people will commit wrong in the local church. It does happen. And then you are to be going off to reprove him. Go and tell is what our, our version says. The definitions for reprove are here, and there's four of them. And of course, one of the things you're careful not to do when you uh, interpret a word from another language or even in your own language is you don't bring every definition in the dictionary to that word's meaning in its occurrence. Think about the English word run. It's a verb. It can mean uh, running as in what your legs do, or it can mean running as in what an engine does, or it can mean running as in what your nose does. Very, very different. We don't bring every sense. Uh, it can also be a noun. Uh, you can have a 5K run. Uh, ladies uh, used to wear pantyhose and they would get a run in them. So we don't bring every definition of a word into its use. We learn by context what the word is saying. So look at these definitions. We have uh, number four we can eliminate right away. Uh, you're not going to go to your brother alone and punish or discipline them. Um, but uh, what about these other three? I really can't choose between them. You're going to go to them and bring to light. You're going to go convict or convince. You're going to go convince your brother. I, I suppose I, I don't like that as much. Um, you're going to go reprove or correct your brother. I, I like the idea of either bringing to light or reprove and correct. And of course, our, def, our, our translations, I think, translate it well, um, to go and tell him his fault, to go and reprove him or convict or convince. Well, uh, the next thing we notice in this text is that it is something that occurs between you and him alone. And of course, him is the universal, uh, the male sex in foreign languages is the universal sex. So obviously, this could be going between men or women. And um, he to go alone. And, and, and hopefully you deal with it there. You don't go first tell your pastor. You don't go first and commiserate with another member and talk about them. Uh, you go and deal directly. Now, of, of course, that wouldn't deal in an abusive situation we may, uh, where, where you'd be placing yourself in some form of danger. Uh, but, but a normal day-to-day -day activities and problems with people, you go to them and you deal with them. You don't escalate it. Now, 
If they don't hear you, then we have this escalation. Take one or two others along with you. If that doesn't happen, tell it to the church. And if they don't listen to the church, they're to become like a Gentile and a tax collector. They're to be regarded as a heathen outside the church. And, uh, and, and then here's the statement that was given to Peter. And, and this statement isn't uh, go and have Peter bind them. But, and, 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 or loose them, whatever you loose on heaven will be loosed on earth. But rather, this is said to the church broadly. It was said to Peter first, because he was the first with the great confession. But it is said to the church broadly, whatever you bind on earth shall be bound in heaven, and whatever you loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. It is a great authority that the church has when she is in submission to God, meeting in the name of Jesus Christ, rendering a judgment on a decision. I would just caution you, if you ever find yourself in a situation of church discipline, if you ever find the church setting you outside her membership, that should be a matter of grave concern. Well, uh, with that, we're going to continue studying this week and look forward to having a wonderful Resurrection Sunday together uh, as we study Matthew 18, verses 15 through 20. Thank you.